Hello, everybody, and good evening. I'm uh, we skip back to the. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry. <laughs> uh, today I'm here, and I'm delighted to present you some parts of one of our ongoing research projects entitled uh, "Assessment of the EC2 Crack Modeling uh, with the Thermoelastic Plastic." for the case of additive manufacturing, particularly for the direct energy deposition. Uh, I will present on behalf of our group, and I'm a student under supervision of Professor Anna Reis and Professor Cesar Sa. Uh, and let's dive in, uh, inside the motivation of the study. Uh, additive manufacturing as a disruptive conventional manufacturing technique these days, luring the attraction of the uh, industries and scholars all over the world, uh, for more than two decades. Uh, although many uh, progress had been achieved during these years, but uh, still there is a vacant position for the uh, comprehensive understanding of the process parameter with the mechanical response of the system. The computational approach here can play the role uh, to supplement the current of the material and error methodology, which is really uh, time consuming and expensive. Uh, so the computational can be an uh, efficient design tool for understanding of the correlation between the process parameter with the uh, mechanical uh, response of the uh, produced material. Uh, if the question uh, raised up about the methodology, we are uh, thinking about, uh, or the proposed methodology with our group is, uh, multi multi scale multi physics uh, considering with the uh, Base field modeling for comprehensive understanding of the AM process with the uh, different scale uh, and the different physics which is involved during the process. And the way of implementation we selected is MOOSE, the multi, multi physics object orientation uh, simulation environment, which is developed by the Idaho National University. Uh, in the realm of um, additive manufacturing, I'm working with the high energy density of the laser. Various type, type of the crack may uh, manifest. And understanding of the, the crack and the mechanism is uh, paramount because it can help about the structural integrity, uh, specifically for the case of the inconel superalloy, which is our case study. Uh, it's really important to avoid any type of the imperfection inside the structure because we are dealing with the, uh, for example, aerospace application or about the power. Uh, uh, Power transient system. So, uh, understanding of the crack evolution or the initiation or the propagation is uh, very important. And uh, understanding of this this mechanism not only help to uh, optimize the process parameter, uh, it also can lead to the uh, lead uh, to the troubleshooting of the system and also uh, the the best type of the uh, the mechanical property we expect to have. Uh, taking to account all of the, the intimate and stage variable or the physics which is involved during the additive manufacturing, uh, we selected free energy function method, uh, which is based on the thermodynamic basic uh, with respect to the first and second law of the thermodynamic. Uh, here in this case, we consider the elastic, plastic, equivalent plastic, temperature, phase field. Phase field here is based on the Allencon uh, non conserve order parameter, which can control the damage and the gradient of the phase field. So the whole term of the free energy would be uh, consists of the elastic, plastic, temperature, and phase field. And I detail uh, in detail, I ex uh, explain about the, the formulation. And uh, if you are interested about more detail, I put some good references in the slide. Uh, some of the work are uh, presented by our group, and some of them are uh, which the, the another group. Uh, the time rate of the free, free energy help us to understand about the, how the system gets a stability. With uh, equilibrium of the thermodynamic condition, we can get the constitutive modeling should be solved for the system. For example, for this case, 
the heat conduction equation is coupled with the, another consideration like the effect of the uh, plastic dissipation or the effect of the uh, laser heat source or uh, some uh, coupled the variable from the degradation function from the elasticity and plasticity or the phase field equation here is coupled with the GC uh, so-called here a parameter which is uh, involved with the temperature effect to uh, to see the effect of a changing temperature, how affect on the damage evolution or the momentum balance. So here we have three uh, main field variable, displacement, phase field, and temperature. And uh, correspondingly, we need to solve the three constitutive equations. Uh, with using of a finite element, uh, which is uh, the old technique for solving of a, a whole domain and uh, dividing to the subdomain for the elements, uh, we should uh, create the residual form of the all equation for the all subdomains, uh, the residual form of the equation for the displacement, phase field, and temperature with uh, considering the multi multiple of the test function and the shape function, derivative of the shape function. Uh, so far, we talked about the different things, different physics additive manufacturing about the imperfection in the uh, in the material during the the process and uh, not ex situ uh, we are talking about the in situ process damage evolution during the process so what's our solution recently we switched to the build up some main application and uh, some sub application which are work together and they have the possibility of coupling and work like the couple feature or uncoupled uh, this application has also the feature of the enrich from outsource, like the plug from other program. Uh, so we developed the main application, primarily run uh, to solve the heat conduction equation, and it's getting enriched from the other sub application for solving of the momentum balance equation and also uh, the damage evolution. But what's the, uh, the hypothesis between this? Because when we are talking about the different phenomena, we are talking about the different scale of the energy or time. So uh, for using of a staggered, which is the mathematical technique for the dividing of the, the time between the different application, uh, we think about the dividing them between sub application to make it more computationally affordable. Or sometimes when we want to ignore some of the feature, we can just run the simple uh, application without considering some couple variable. Uh, another issue we are dealing with them when we talk about the additive manufacturing is about the uh, mass fraction adding to the computational domain. Here, without considering any predefined geometry for the deposit layer, we use the adaptive mesh refinement. So I developed the algorithm which is working with two conditions. The first condition which is which runs this algorithm is uh, by the maximum of the temperature, where temperature reached to the melting temperature, it recognized this, uh, this area is, uh, should be added to the computational domain. Uh, but after cooling down, it probably we may lose this co uh, condition. So we need to add another extra condition, which is the consolidation for the irreversibility of the condition of the activation. And uh, for getting of a more accurate shape of the Outward, outward layer. I recently used the AMR technique. AMR technique is working with the Kelly algorithm of the error function, which is capture the error in the element which gets activated and start to calculate how it's losing the temperature. If it's in the outward, they start to, uh, to refine the element. And some of the element which is not in the domain of the computation will be coarse. So it helps about the uh, reduce the uh, degree of the freedom of the equation and also for the solving of uh, and considering the activated layer it really helps about uh, computational resources because it's if we don't use it and uh, we divide it to the finer mesh could be uh, computationally is really demanding uh, as i explained before uh, because of a different time scale we have in the different phenomena for example we have the phase changing, we have the crack, we have the uh, heating or the interaction of the laser with the uh, imagine. We have the, the solid state, but imagine we have the powder. The interaction is really short span time. So uh, we should uh, 
change the time or manage the time between all of these sub application. The method we use is the S tagger. S tagger is between the non convex parameter. It keeps one of the parameter which is uh, less convex uh, solved, and a start iteration uh, around another parameter is more convex. Uh, for this purpose, I put another paper which is developed, uh, which is uh, written and published by uh, one of our colleagues and our professor. It's interesting and in detail uh, explain about the, how to implement the algorithm and use it for the case of the elastoplastic uh, phase field damage. Numerical implementation is MOOSE. Uh, is done by using of a kernel. Kernel are responsible for putting off the all elements of the computation, like the making the residual form of the constitutive equation. And uh, instead of using the, uh, the full Nielsen method, which is uh, very accurate by time consuming and computationally sometimes uh, convergence is very complex, we use the predefined Jacobian uh, Newton Kirlov method, uh, which is based on some assumption and uh, instead of creating the Jacobian of the matrix, it uh, dedicates the S space to the Jacobian and start to calculate it. Uh, and it's very uh, good method for the large scale simulation. And we use the PCG technique for the curl of solver. Uh, for um, mesh, we use the libmesh open source code, which is developed by the TU Austin. And uh, the solver we use is Petsy solver, which is developed in the University of Chicago. Uh, so far, we talk about the, the code implementation and the case of the additive manufacturing. But at the first and foremost, I uh, implement all of these things uh, on the simplest case could be in the single notch with considering the elastic plastic and temperature with the same range of the cooling rate near the additive manufacturing, but we don't have any um, mass adding to the computational domain. Uh, as you can see here, but it's working too uh, slowly. Okay. The transient of the temperature can be seen in the right side and uh, the front of the P value and uh, the adaptive mesh refinement because when you use the phase field damage model, there is a consideration for the length of the phase field uh, and the crack lens. It should be respect always. So uh, instead of making all domain with the fine mesh, we use the adaptive technique mesh. And the marker is uh, the indicator for the capturing of the, the error in the uh, Kelly algorithm. Oh yeah, we can see when the the damage model reached to one because phase field is a diffusive damage model. It's uh, telling about when the value of the phi, uh, which is called as an indicator of the phase field uh, energy model, when is equal to zero, it means the structure is health and without any crack. And when it reached to one, it means uh, it's fully damaged. So here I try to show when uh, the plasticity couple with the elasticity, how the damage is controlling of the stress strength here. As a second case, as a second case, uh, I test it with a different cooling rate and I reach it to something related to the additive manufacturing and I show how much it can control the phase field variable with changing of the temperature transient. And it can affect on the stress strain curve by approaching it to the uh, sharper cooling rate. The second case study is for the additive manufacturing. I put everything in the transparent feature to see how the deposit layer gets activated on top of the substrate and how the damage evolution is happening. They are from two different uh, 
vector files of the response, and I put them like uh, with some filters to make it possible to see how they are evoluted together with the specific process parameter. And the third case, um, yeah, oh yeah, it's in continue with the previous one. I showed how the model has possibility in capturing of the geometry printed uh, clad layer on top of the substrate. And um, the image on the bottom is showing about the error function, which is captured uh, the lateral surface. Uh, the lateral su surface are those surface get activated by the Kelly algorithm function of the, the error. Uh, and the third case study is a little bit more complex. It's showing the circular path. Oh, sorry. <laughs> because I cannot control the speed of the movies. It's Anyhow, it's uh, it's showing how it can be activated by the adaptive mesh technique, like I previously showed. And this slide, I showed the flux of the temperature, which is the because in the case of additive manufacturing, we don't have any external forces for make the fracture. The fracture is just uh, controlling with some internal forces because of the shearing cage. So I. I in this slide, I try to show the, the flux of the temperature, which is playing the role on the happening of a fracture. And fracture here is like the, the plan. I captured it with some filters, but you can see it's propagate and I could manage it. As a conclusion, uh, the thermo thermodynamically consistent model for the thermoelastoplastic uh, couple uh, phase field in situ cracking is developed in this work. And uh, we couple all of the phenomena together and the influence of the temperature dependency and the cooling rate and the uh, um, author of the, uh, the damage is considered in this work. And the single edge notch is, uh, is a study as the first case study of uh, for uh calibration and the technique of amr is used for the activation for the subdomaining uh hot crack phenomena in the additive manufacturing is covered and uh, finally a novel uh, final elements framework like the main application and the sub application is developed that has the feature uh, to be considered for all of the physics that may happen in the additive manufacturing. Thanks for your attention, and uh, I'm ready for any question. <laughs>